The Milky Way Galaxy circa 2180s is paradoxically both idyllic and foreboding. Great strides have been made in improving the standard of living for most humans who possess a fledgling empire built alongside new alien allies. However, conflict and war are a near constant state, and many planets throughout the Milky Way galaxy have become battlegrounds, as pirates, mercenaries, warlords, and rogue states vie for supremacy. Welcome viewer to Mass Effect Tech. Today, we're going to explore some of the military vehicles that define the landscape of terrestrial combat during the Reaper Wars. Most of the ground assault vehicles utilized throughout the Milky Way between 2183 and 2186 serve as infantry fighting vehicles, vehicles which serve a dual role as troop transport and heavy weapons platform for anti-infantry and light anti-vehicle applications. By 2183, no vehicle was more synonymous with this description or was as ubiquitous as the M29 Grizzly. Shielded by the system's alliance since before the first contact war of 2157, the Grizzly's 30-year service life across a variety of harsh interplanetary climates is a testament to its durability and utility. The M29 was produced in two variants. The first was a military variant which possessed a heavy mass accelerator cannon designed for anti-vehicle and anti-personnel firing support. This variant also included an additional antenna assembly to provide better communications and tactical information feeds in and out of combat. A second civilian legal model was developed which served as a personnel and cargo transport vehicle used by a multitude of private ventures from miners and treasure hunters to mercenary organizations. Versions of both variants containing the additional antenna array are also known to be used, meaning the antenna is likely an add-on feature designed to facilitate special use cases rather than serving a purely military application. Designed to carry six passengers and a driver, its long angular cockpit serves as a sloping armor deflector to protect the main compartment. However, its long slender body means that it suffers from poor maneuverability and the weak armor on its sides coupled with slow speed made its long-term survivability in combat questionable. By the early 2180s, it was apparent that the M29 was no longer sufficient for the needs of Alliance military service. Newly encountered forms of fauna, namely Thresher Maws, were capable of easily destroying the vehicle, private corporations and warlords had managed to acquire working examples of the armed variant, and considering the fact that the model predated human knowledge of living alien civilizations and their combat capabilities, a need for an improved IFV that could withstand IFVs fielded by other species was well and truly here. While the Alliance military had already begun to phase out the M29 in favor of the M35 Mako by 20 183, they would continue to be a regular asset assigned to Alliance forces possibly as late as 2185. The M35 Mako was designed to improve on the M29's design and fulfilled this task spectacularly. Both vehicles were six-wheeled infantry fighting vehicles with exit points between the front and center axles, meaning neither could deploy troops while moving without risking them being crushed beneath their own vehicle. Both vehicles possessed similar layouts, meaning retraining M29 crews for the new vehicle was relatively seamless. Both vehicles carried six passengers, however the Mako added the option for a co-pilot, while the Grizzly required a single pilot to control all functions of the vehicle. Despite its similarities to the Grizzly, the Mako was superior in virtually every way. Its improved 155mm mass accelerator cannon had a faster firing rate than that of the M29 and also possessed a coaxial heavy repeating auto cannon for improved anti-personnel application without the collateral damage of a mass accelerator cannon. The M35 features sloped armor on the front and sides, allowing greater protection for lower weight costs. Additionally, the Mako possessed regenerative kinetic barriers, which served as a first line of defense against mass accelerator weapons and reduced the impact exerted against the vehicle's armor. It was the first Alliance IFB to possess a mass effect generator, which effectively reduced the vehicle's overall mass, improving speed and tolerance to swampy or unstable terrain. It possessed a number of thrusters on the bottom 
and rear, allowing it to drastically improve acceleration, but most importantly, allowing it to be dropped from low-flying aircraft without damaging the vehicle. Finally, it included an Omnigel repair feature, which allowed damaged components to be rapidly repaired in the field, meaning that unlike the Grizzly, a damaged axle or wheel could be repaired without the need for extraction from the mission area. The Mako is shorter than the Grizzly, and greater range of motion for its front wheels allowed for superior maneuverability. Its superior suspension was welcomed by crews, but the drastically improved speed meant that even with the improved suspension, many Alliance teams would refuse to eat prior to a patrol, given the jostling they knew they were in for. True complaints regarding the M35's bumpy handling and slow climbs to the tops of ridges, mountains, and other rough geological formations were minor, but enough that the Alliance military immediately began exploring alternatives to the M35. Regardless, the Mako was widely accepted and succeeded in completely replacing the M29 by the end of 2185, a phenomenal undertaking which speaks volumes for the troops' faith in their new IFB. During the battle to retake Earth in 2186, the majority of Allied ground force IFBs were Makos, a reflection of their long-term survivability even in the face of Reaper invasion. Throughout its short service, there are no known instances of the F-35 falling into the hands of enemy military forces, granting Alliance forces technological and tactical superiority over any criminal element they may be expected to face. Design and development of the M44 Hammerhead is unclear, and much of the information about its origins varies from source to source. While the exact year that it was developed is unknown, it is most probable that the Hammerhead was developed by the human terrorist organization Cerberus, with at least two prototypes developed between 2184 and 2185. An M44 allocated to a Cerberus research team was collected by well-known Citadel Spectre Agent Shepard, who by all accounts used the prototype on several missions where mobility across large operational areas were necessary. Cerberus allocated another M44 to personnel assigned to Operation Overlord. When Shepard surrendered himself to Alliance custody in response to allegations of war crimes, the M44 in his possession was confiscated and sent to Alliance labs. Officially, this was to improve issues with poor armor, though it is more likely the intent was to reverse engineer the vehicle as theoretically any M44 would be able to serve as a test vehicle for enhancements to the design, suggesting the Alliance had no working examples of the hammerhead prior to this point. The M44 was designed to build on the advances made in the M35 Mako, with powerful mass effect fields effectively lowering the vehicle's mass and sloping armor increasing its resistance to enemy fire. However, due to its development as a hovercraft, the M44 sacrifices kinetic barrier projectors and armor in exchange for incredible speed and unparalleled performance over nearly any terrain. Though it appears quite similar to the turret on the Mako, the M44 actually possesses a non-rotating forward-facing guided missile launch which fires numerous high explosive charges to devastate enemy infantry or whittle down armor on enemy vehicles, killing them with bug bites. It possesses an automatic repair feature drawing on advancements in Omnitool technology requiring mere seconds to correct near catastrophic damage. Though the exact troop capacity of the Hammerhead is unknown, it is likely lower than the Mako or the Grizzly due to the large hover jet occupying the area used for troop compartments in the earlier models. It is known to carry at least three personnel between its twin cockpits and another compartment which presumably doubles as troop or cargo stowage. While it possesses a definitive improvement over the M35 in terms of speed, its ability to hover over water, and agility over smooth terrain, the M44 suffers when deployed in exceptionally rough terrain or in confined urban environments where it can't maneuver out of the way of incoming ordnance. It likely won't replace the Mako as the standard fighting vehicle of the Alliance military, however its usefulness in special use cases is likely to ensure that it remains in Alliance inventories well after 2186. While it is unclear if the Alliance military ever fielded the M44 in significant numbers, some propaganda footage released during the Reaper invasion of Earth depicts Alliance Marines operating in conjunction with M44s. However, a lack of first-hand accounts of members of Hammer ground forces in the battle to retake Earth in 2186 suggests that few, if any, managed to survive to the latter stages of the battle. Introduced in 2170, the A61 Mantis fills a role as ground assault aircraft and is fairly unique on this list. 
While aerospace fighters are often brought in to provide close cover ground support, their exceptional speed and non-specialized weapons pose a significant threat of friendly fire and collateral damage. The purpose-built A61 is faster and more maneuverable than any ground-based vehicle and can instantly jump from one area of the battle space to another. Utilizing a powerful Mass Effect generator to render the vehicle almost completely weightless, it utilizes vectored thrust modules extended from two wings to maneuver and propel itself. This allows it to hover in place while targeting and delivering ordnance against its targets, rapidly extricating itself from combat before it can receive return fire, and redeploy as needed. Due to private development and its immense utility to ground forces, the Mantis enjoys service in virtually every military force in the Milky Way, with notable quantities used by the Asari and Systems Alliance. However, unscrupulous sales and marketing practices has also allowed large quantities to fall into the hands of anyone who can afford them, including black market arms merchants, warlords, mercenary companies, and even terrorist organizations like Cerberus. Like most successful ground assault platforms, the Mantis utilizes a modular weapons load out with external hardpoints mounted above the thruster pylons for delivering precision kill rockets PKRs. And most models include twin M350 mass accelerator autocannons mounted below the cockpit for suppressing anti-infantry fire. Purchasers have the option to include a kinetic barrier, with most militaries opting for the life-saving technology, while many individual purchasers opt to go without as a cost savings measure. Though troop carrying capacity is unknown, most models include a passenger compartment for carrying a small complement of shock troops or mechs. While it doesn't have the firepower of the M35 Mako, the speed of a fighter or the troop carrying capacity of the UT-47 Kodiak drop shuttle, its well-rounded mission profile and modularity ensure that you're bound to see one eventually in the modern battlefield. The Tomka is an infantry fighting vehicle designed and used exclusively by the Krogan on Tuchanka. The desolate, difficult to traverse ruins of Tuchanka's bombed out cities necessitated a ground vehicle which is both large enough to accommodate a squad of well armed and well armored Krogan, and durable enough to roll over mounds of rubble, jagged sheet metal and debris, and take a few hits from heavy weapons fired by enemy Krogan. After generations of social decline brought about by the Genophage and constant warring with neighboring clans, Tomka's which continue to run are becoming a rare sight on Tuchanka, and clans which are able to field a fleet of Tomkas are often considered to be the most powerful and respected militarily. Much like the Mako and Grizzly, the Tomka possesses a heavy cannon in order to provide heavy suppressing fire for infantry before and after they disembark, and much like the Mako and Grizzly, infantry also disembark via hatches located between the front and center axles. It is uncertain if the dual cannons located in the turret are mass accelerators. It is possible that they are are more primitive due to the exceptionally long service life of the Tomka, and given the fact that Tomkas appear to utilize an old-fashioned internal combustion engine, the aging technology of the Tomka becomes even more apparent. It is uncertain if recent social reforms of one Erd not Rex will allow for cooperative facilities to be built to allow the Tomka to be updated and once again manufactured, or if the design is doomed to fall into obscurity. One thing that is certain is that centuries of use in one of the least hospitable environments known to man bear stern witness to its value, even on the battlefields of the 2180s. While not a ground assault vehicle in the traditional sense, Armature and Colossus class Geth units are still a force to be reckoned with by infantry and mobile cavalry units. The Geth view each software program and subroutine as part of a larger whole, and as such do not view any singular Geth unit as an individual, but rather a collection of Geth programs. As such, they view Armatures and traditional Geth infantry units as nothing more than single platforms running Geth software. This means that in effect, the Colossus and Armature are able to analyze the battlefield and respond just as quickly as Geth infantry units, a feat organic vehicle crews simply cannot compete with. Thankfully, the Armature and its more heavily armed and armored variant, the Colossus, are slow, lumbering quadrupedal walkers, meaning that even though they have faster response times, their comparatively slow actuations can allow skilled organic crews of faster IFVs to outmaneuver them and whittle down their armor through sustained fire. 
Little is known about this vehicle. The only time one has been witnessed in combat was during the Battle of Rannoch in 2186, as Citadel Spectre and Human Military Operative Commander Shepard utilized one to flee from a Reaper destroyer. It is unknown what the vehicle's purpose or designation are, however it seems to serve a purpose similar to the M44 Hammerhead, as a swift hovercraft designed for moving supplies and geth platforms and providing firing support for anti-personnel and light anti-vehicle roles. Like many other IFVs of this period, its weapon systems proved insufficient for dealing with Reaper capital ships, but beyond that, no other data about its intended use case, numbers and distribution, or combat capabilities are currently known. The privately developed and manufactured M080 infantry fighting vehicle very quickly made a name for itself in intragalactic military forces, planetary defense forces, and just about anyone who desires such a vehicle. Though little is known about its development and manufacture processes, it very quickly supplanted the M29 Grizzly as the de facto ground assault vehicle used by pirates, warlords, and military groups between 2183 and 2185. By 2186, the Alliance military had also a adopted the M080 for a variety of roles. The M080, or O80 as it is more affectionately known, shares many design features with the M35, with its tandem cockpits reminiscent of the M44, suggesting that many of the same people may have been involved with designing both sets of vehicles. The O80 features heavily sloped armor, six-wheeled construction on an independent suspension, and much like all other IFEs on this list, allows crew to enter and exit the vehicle via hatches located between the front and center axles. However, unlike the Mako, this model is offered in three distinct specialized variants. The first and most common variant is an IFV, arranged similarly to the Mako, although the number of passengers it can carry is classified, a similar complement to the Mako and Grizzly is likely. Due to their similar construction to the Mako, Mako, the O80 possesses similar agility and speed when traversing difficult terrain, though the O80 does not appear to have many of the more advanced features of the M35 like mass effect generator, kinetic barriers, and orbital drop thrusters. The main gun appears to be similar to that of the M29, with slower traversal and firing speed than the M35, but still sufficient for modern infantry support roles. These limitations likely explain why this particular variant was never accepted as a replacement to the M35, however it still poses a significant enough upgrade over the M29 that it enjoys service in private militaries and security firms throughout the galaxy. The second variant is a dedicated Armored Personnel Carrier, or APC, which removes the turret in favor of an expanded passenger compartment. This larger variant keeps the sloping armor of its more combat-oriented counterpart and serves as a supply transport, ambulance, and troop transport. The greatest improvement this variant enjoys over other IFVs is the additional two rear-facing hatches, allowing troops to disembark from the rear using the IFV for cover, rather than disembarking from the sides where they are vulnerable. Additionally, troops are less susceptible to being run over by their own vehicle since they do not have to pass between the front and center rows of tires. The third variant makes use of the rapid development of the Thanix Weapon Program, a secret project pursued by the Turian Hierarchy and Solarian STG and later expanded to include the system's alliance. An M080 mounted missile platform which fired missiles equipped with Thanix warheads became a game changer in high yield anti-armor application. At least one M080 Thanix launcher is confirmed to have eliminated a Reaper destroyer during the battle to retake Earth in 2186, though of dozens that were deployed, most failed to approach within firing range of their targets during this operation. All variants of the M080 are equipped with tow rings slung from the front cockpits, allowing them to drag obstacles and damaged vehicles from the road in order to clear a path. It is no wonder that the APC and Thanix variants were added to Alliance inventories to better fulfill roles that the M35 Mako was ill-suited for. The modularity of its design, ubiquity of its deployment, and standardized layout and complement means that the M080, perhaps more than any other ground assault vehicle, shaped the course of history during the turbulent period surrounding the arrival of the Reapers and the struggle for all free peoples to defeat them. If you're still watching, we at Grey Galaxies would just like to say thank you. If you enjoyed this content, a like would be a huge help, as user engagement is a useful metric that we use to determine what sort of content you, the viewer, are interested in. Is there anything that we missed? We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, it's been real, stay safe, and we hope to see you here next time on Grey Galaxies.